Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead to create shader, cinema 40 octane and octane material, drag and drop that onto my sphere, double click to open this up, let's change the material type to universal and open up the node editor. Now I want you to also go to your plugins and just open up your live viewer and just click on this icon to send it over to the live viewer. So we can see our universal material over here, it's very reflective and I'm going to be showing you how we can start editing this and turning it into that material that you've seen in the thumbnail. So a universal material is basically a combination of the diffuse, the glossy, the specular and the metallic so it encompasses all of those material types into one material. So this is a fantastic way to create some really detailed and awesome looking materials. I want you to pay attention to the left hand side over here. You'll see all of these different colors. We want to pay attention to all of these green icons, right? So everything that's listed as green is considered to be a generator and a generator does exactly what it says. It generates patterns and different effects for our materials. So we're going to be using the noise generator. So I'm just going to click and drag that out onto my shader tree and I'm going to connect this to the albedo and to the film width. So let's pay attention to our live viewer. You can already see there's some stuff that's happening over here. We can see some patterns and all of these different colors that are visible on our sphere. But to, just to visualize this a lot better, select your universal material, go to roughness and let's increase the float value to 0 0.76. And now we can really see all of these different colors and this pattern that's been generated. So all of these swirly patterns that you see on here are a direct result of the noise generator and all of the colors are a result of the film width. So go ahead, select noise. You can see we've even got different types of noise. So I'm going to change mine to turbulence and turbulence is going to give us a completely different effect. So you guys can go ahead, play around with the different noise types and experiment, see what you can actually come up with. Uh, but I'm going to be playing around with some of these settings and just to explain this briefly, this Omega setting basically determines how detailed the pattern is going to be. So you'll see if I decrease this value, my pattern gets a lot more simple and if I increase that, it adds a lot more uh, detail and variation onto the actual pattern. Right, so I'm bringing mine all the way back to zero. I want this pattern to be very simple because obviously we're trying to create the material from the thumbnail. And over here on the gamma, this controls how much of this pattern is actually going to be visible. So you can see if I increase my gamma, the pattern actually starts to disappear. But if I decrease this, we've got more of that pattern visible in our scene. So I'm going to put my gamma value on 0 0.46. All right. And you can also play around with some of the contrast as well and see what it does. It also creates a, uh, like a separation between these patterns. But I usually just play around with the gamma. So I'm going to put this value on 0 0.03 and press enter. Now I want to bring out some more of these really trippy and awesome colors on my material. So go ahead, select the universal material and go to the thin film layer. So this works in conjunction with the film width and pay attention to the film IOR. If I decrease this value, it brings some more of those colors onto these different patterns. And if I start increasing that, it gets rid of it. So I can have these really uh, distinct black lines, but you can still see some of the, the uh, color banding on the actual material. But I want to bring this all the way back to one because we're creating a really fun and awesome looking colorful material. So a great way to have better control over the intensity of gradients or even to add additional color onto a material is to use a mapping node. So it's these maroon colored icons. We're going to be using a gradient mapping node. So just drag and drop that onto your shader tree. But you'll see when I hover over these lines, they turn orange. So if I let go now, it automatically connects those nodes together. So I'm going to make sure that this gradient is also going into the albedo. And there we go. So we'll be modifying the gradient slider. So let's select gradient. Now over here we can obviously add additional colors. So if I wanted to, let's just click over here and add maybe let's say purple. It's going to start adding purple onto our material. So this is a cool way to add some additional colors onto your material as well. But I'm just going to keep it the default colors that are generated by the film width. So if I click on this icon as well and just play around with the percentage over here on V 
right? You can see that I also start getting different colors on our shader, on our shader, and this is all driven by the film width. So experiment with this. Maybe add additional colors. It's completely up to you. I want you guys to also have freedom when you're creating these materials. So I just went ahead and I put my percentage on V on 89% and I just moved this a little bit away because I don't want it to be clamped right at the end. So this is my end result that you're looking at right now. Okay, so our material is done. I'm just going to turn off the left and the right light because this is how it looks in the thumbnail image. So you can see that lighting plays a really important role with materials. Uh, that's why you should experiment with lighting as well to get different effects. But our material is done. So let's see how this looks on more complex geometry. So I'm going to activate the dragon, hide the sphere and just snap to the dragon camera and drag and drop that onto our dragon. So let's see what's going on here. So the way that it's currently mapped, you can see we're getting this really crazy effect with all of these colors. But if you want the material to be laid out a lot better, we can go back to the node editor, go to our noise and just select projection right and change this to XYZ to UVW and you'll see that we get a completely different uh, way that it's laid out and now you can also click on noise and click on UVW transform so it's created two transform nodes well sorry it's created two nodes one for the transform one for texture projection and I can go into transform and play around with the scale and remember because this is procedural the quality will never degrade right it's customizable, so I can go back to noise. Maybe I want to adjust the gamma. All right, so I can customize this material and make it look completely different very, very quickly. So procedural texturing is super powerful and it's really awesome to, to use. So there we go. Now we've got the material on our dragon. And just one more tip. Remember that you can animate these materials as well. So let's say I'll put this on zero. I'm here in the noise. I'm going to click on this to create a keyframe. Then I'll go to 20 and decrease this and then click on this icon to create another keyframe. So now this material has been animated. As you can see over there, if I click on play, it starts animating. So you've got a really cool material that you've created, but you can even take it a step further and even animate it, uh, which I think is really, really cool. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial. You've got a brief introduction to the node editor. Now you can do so much stuff in that node editor, but I wanted to introduce you to this material and this pattern that you can create really quickly and easily. So go and put it into practice. Go and experiment with some of the different noise types. Play around with those sliders and see what you can come up with. All right, so thank you so much for watching my video. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.